Welcome to Bible 180, Second Chronicles, which focuses only on the kings of Judah and emphasizes, like First Chronicles, the temple, the Levites, and the sacrifices and connections to those things. Solomon picks up where David left off and completes the temple. All of Israel's elders gather for the consecration of the temple, and once the Ark of the Covenant enters, holy smokes fill the temple. Solomon recognizes that Yahweh has fulfilled his promise to Moses, and the nation rejoices. However, the southern kingdom quickly goes south. Rehoboam is so unfaithful that Yahweh sends Egypt to carry off treasures from his own temple. However, King Abijah is saved and Jeroboam of Israel is defeated because Israel is worshiping idols while Judah is still worshiping Yahweh the temple. King Asa destroys some of the high places of idols, leans on the Lord, and repairs the temple until he grows prideful and is struck with disease and eventually death. King Jehoshaphat is organized and loyal to Yahweh and defeats powerful enemies with Yahweh's help. King Joash repairs the temple but later worships at high places and is handed over to his enemies. King Hezekiah purifies the temple, reestablishes a variety of roles within the temple, and celebrates the Passover. Now the Passover, a high holiday, hadn't been celebrated properly in some years. However, not everyone is ceremonially clean, so Hezekiah prays that the Lord would be lenient, and since the people are trying at least to return to Yahweh, he doesn't judge them. Hezekiah also initiates and organizes offerings to improve the temple and to support the Levites and the priests so they could dedicate themselves to the work at hand. Hezekiah's son, Manasseh, does even more evil than the nations which the Israelites had driven out. Shockingly though, after being exiled, Manasseh actually repents, and even more shockingly, Yahweh actually listens and rescues him. But his son Amon is even worse and is quickly assassinated. King Josiah ruthlessly attacks idolatry, repairs the temple, and finds and applies the book of the Torah. He also fully celebrates the Passover, which hadn't happened properly since the days of Samuel. After Josiah's death, the, all the kings of Judah are not only immoral, but they're all vassals and puppets of other empires. Eventually, the Babylonians destroy Jerusalem and carry off the people and the temple articles. God listens to those who seek him, but eventually his patience runs out when dealing with abuse, unfaithful leadership, and refusal to repent. A reoccurring theme is kings who are evil but repent are often still shown mercy, while even good kings who go bad will still receive correction and punishment. The vital question throughout it is how faithful are these kings to Yahweh? The most important leadership for Judah's king is not battle prowess or efficient management, but how they lead the people to follow and worship Yahweh. Jesus will be a king that does not experience a lot of military success, political or material wealth, and yet he is faithful, and the Lord will deliver him from his foes as well.